He gave me a prayer. Holy Father, as we come before you this day, we ask that you would once again enlighten our hearts and bless our souls and guide our spirits. You have given us the right and the privilege of knowing that we are truly, in your eyes, precious and important. But we ask that you would guide us with our wisdom, that you would open our minds to understand your will, and that you would bless what we do so that we can bring a praise to you. We thank you this day as we look to you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake, grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us to knowledge of you and of your will, and to obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given His only Son to die for us, and for His sake, forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in His name, He gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Psalm 23. We do read these verses responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you, for you are with me. Your you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Holy Spirit. 
Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none, of, none among you whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. The this lesson is found in the seventh chapter of Revelation. It begins with verse 9. Of all the pictures of heaven that we are given, there is none more remarkably blessed than this one. Because it is explaining to us that we will all, together as believers, the one body of people of all time of faith, will be standing before the throne of God and being able to rejoice together in the wonder of what we have been given by His grace. It is an amazing text of what heaven, this one piece of heaven is going to be like. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes, and peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the land, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robe? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes.
message was presented. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not a part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give eternal life. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Here is the Holy Gospel.
gave you mom to listen to because she is smart and loving and will do anything to help. Everybody understand? Okay, so right now, I want you to repeat one last time. God, thank you for my mother. Amen. Thanks, guys. Unless 
the one remarkable gift God has given to sheep is that if the shepherd raises them, they get so used to the voice that when the shepherd speaks, they calm down. They will follow that shepherd anywhere because the voice of the shepherd, the words that he speaks, brings a calm and a unity to a group of animals that have no ability to do anything by themselves because it's called the power of the word in the life of the sheep. So the Lord presents them with this truth. You refuse to listen to my word. Those who are my sheep, they listen to my word. They follow me. They rejoice in what I say. You who have no defense. And this is the one remarkable comparison God is making. Outside of Christ, Human beings are helpless. We can defend ourselves against nothing. And the only hope that there is for anyone who is born into this world sinful is the grace and word of God. And when Jesus spoke, he touched the hearts and the lives of all these people except for these arrogant human beings who believed they were better than Christ. They wanted Christ to be a military leader. They wanted him to come and remove all the power around them instead of do what Jesus was doing. Healing people and restoring people and feeding people and granting them a comfort and grace. So the Lord came. And he speaks very directly to them that he is so powerful because of the word that he speaks that he will never lose a one. It is an amazing understanding that Christ wanted to bring to them of this position that he held. He was the Son of God. He honored his Father. And no matter what anyone said, he would never walk away from the office he was holding, and he would never do anything but to honor the office of his Father. He was trying to grant them this remarkable understanding of how they were to view life and to view themselves. And they continued to refuse. Mother's Day. It's a little different for me since Mom has passed. I, um, I had my mom in my head right now because if she was here, she would shake her head and say, Kirky, don't you know to iron your all before you get in front of people? <laughs> and she would have been right. This is bad. The reason it's bad is because I had it at home on a chair. I forgot to bring it back over. I preached at St. Paul's on Monday night and took it home and forgot that I left it on a chair at home. And Remember it, three to eight. And so I came over to church and the whole time I'm thinking, my mother would be embarrassed, my mother would be embarrassed, my mother would be embarrassed. And to honor my mom, I remember. And, and I'll have it ironed by next week. Mother's Day is, is a day for Christians that is unique. And it really is. Luther understood what God taught about mothers. And Luther gave in his fall catechism. And I know that all of you study your catechism every week, so this will be very familiar to you. He describes motherhood as an office. A divine office. An office created by the Father to bring a unity, a strength, and a blessing to his people, to his church, and to families. It was an office created so that every single father, every single mother, would work together to teach their children the importance of what God gives in his fourth commandment of honoring your father and your mother. 
This office that he gives is to grant to us an understanding of the importance that he has created in a family between a hot husband and a wife. I will never forget when my, I was a very small young child, we had this ugly old couch in, in, in our living room. And I say that because mom always referred to it as the ugly old couch. But the reason she had it is because she had five boys. And dad set us down on that couch and he goes, boys, if I ever hear any of you say the word no to your mother, it will be the last time. Now, we boys at that age didn't really know what the last time meant, but we had a pretty good idea that it wasn't positive. And so my dad set up this principle with us. My mother was to be honored, listened to, and obeyed because she was our mother. Dad never once said, Mom is perfect. He never once said she won't make mistakes. He never once said that this is the only woman who has never sinned. He said she was our mother and would be honored. One of the most frustrating things to me in today's world is when I see little kids say things to their mothers that I would have never said to my mom in my whole life. And they're under the age of five. And it's because, collectively speaking, too many people have forgotten the office of what it is to be a mom. There is a God-ordained gift given to our church, to our families. It's called a mom. Who God has given some amazing blessings to that then they share with we who are their kids. And the Father says it is our responsibility collectively to make sure our kids to always understand the wonder of who their mother is, both in words and actions and deeds. So much so that even though my mom is in heaven and she was 91 when she died, I still feel guilty for how I look. Because she's right. This day, as Christians, we understand that we don't celebrate Mother's Day just because it's something we can do. But it's to bring honor to our God. Because our Lord is the one who gives the command, honor your father and your mother. Make sure you understand that you are praying for them, that you are respecting them, that you are listening to them, and that you are serving them. This is our gift as believers, and it never changes. And when our children understand this, we teach them this remarkable perspective of our relationship with our God in heaven. The office that our Lord holds is the office of the Messiah. We humble ourselves before him and we listen to him and we seek out his blessing and we serve him because he gives us that privilege. It's called the action of grace. When I remember, and I do, Seriously, remember what my mom went through with five boys. And she did it with joy. We didn't earn that. She just showered it upon us because she was an extraordinary human being who really loved her boys even though sometimes we made her want to rip out her hair. I am so thankful my father taught us 
as boys, the place my mother held. Because the truth is, only one out of five of us ever told my mother no. And no, it wasn't me. <laughs> only one out of five. And he did it once. He never did it again. So that my mom would understand that we knew her place. Because that is the gift that we are able to give to our mom. It's that gift that God gives us so that we honor Him by showing respect to what He has placed in our lives through our blessing. This day, I thank God for my mother, who He has taken to heaven. And I miss the reality of what I would do on this day if she was here. But I'm going to do it again one day. I'm going to see that woman. She's going to still love me. I'm going to hug her. And she'll call me Kirk. And it will take me back and she says, yes, you should have married your own. I love how God gives us a right to view things, especially according to his wisdom. But it's imperative that we teach our children. That we teach our children the office that a mom holds. So they never forget the blessing that our Lord has given. May our Lord lead us, collectively and individually, to be blessed by His Spirit so that what we share with our children will truly enable them to understand the grace that God has placed in their midst. May He truly guide us all.
us pray. Holy Father, give us a privilege to bring for you our fellow members. And this morning we bring for first of all the snows, Scott and Amanda. Amelia and Audrey. Scott and Amanda, we thank you, gracious Father, for the love that you have given to them, for the blessings that you have placed between them, for the strength and the goodness that you have granted to them, and for the joy that you have touched with them with so many ways. But we ask, dear Lord, that in your spirit you would bind their hearts ever closer, that you would continue to lead them to grow in their understanding of how to serve and support and uplift each other, and that you would walk near them each day and supply them the goodness that comes from you alone. For Amelia and Audrey, we thank you, gracious Father, for the life that you have given, for the love that you have placed upon them, for the many ways that you have enriched and blessed their lives, and the goodness that you continue to hold them near. So we ask that you would hold them all close to you and bless them as only you can. For Cindy Snyder, for Cindy, we thank you, gracious Father, for the life that you have given her, for the many lives that you enable her to touch, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon her, and for the many ways that you have enabled her to find joy and goodness in this world. May you continue to walk with her each day, enlighten her heart and soul, and keep her ever close to you. For the Summers, for Brandon and Kayla. For Brandon and Kayla, we thank you for the life that you have given them together, for the love that you have enabled them to share, for the blessing of the Spirit that has bound their hearts together, and for the many ways that you have enabled them to bring joy to each other. For Kayla especially, we ask your, your blessing, that you would bless her and the child that is growing inside, keeping them both healthy and strong, moving them forward, and providing that remarkable miracle of life into this world at the right time. So I place Brandon and Kayla and the child into your hands and ask your goodness upon them. We also this day bring before you Jerry, and for Jerry we ask that your blessing would be upon him. We thank you for the care that he is receiving, for the anti antibiotics that he is receiving, and ask that you would remove the infection and grant him his strength once again. For Gail, we rejoice at the surgery, them being able to remove the sections of arthritis from which was causing such great problem, that you would help her veins to now reduce in their swelling and firing in the right way and reduce her pain. And so we place her into your hands and thank you for all that you will do. For Bill, we ask that you would be with him on Tuesday, guiding the hands of the surgeon, providing your blessing and all who are working with him, grant him your own peace and comfort, and carry him through this surgery. For Bob and Jerry, we thank you for the 46 years that you have enabled them to share life together and for the joy that you have brought to them in so many ways. We ask this day, dear Lord, your blessing upon mothers. We first of all thank you for the gift they are to our country, to our society, and to our families. We ask that you would open your heart and grant to them your spirit and provide to them the guidance that they all need in order to carry out your will and bring your goodness into the lives of those they love. But may you, dear Lord, always remain near them and bring your blessings upon them in a boldness. For the fish fry, dear Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us, for the many lives we were able to touch, for the goodness that we share together, for the fellowship and the wonder of the love that you enable us to share. May you continue to bless every time we do this and reflect well the hope and the joy that we have in you. And as always, dear Lord, we bring before you our military men and women, asking that you would enrich and bless them, keeping them close to you and guiding them with your wisdom. And as your people, we turn to you once again in the prayer that your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes from above, that your word as becomes it, may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end.